I'm Sarah. I'm a senior photography major at SUNY Purchase. I'm also a freelance photographer in the field. And these are a few of my prints in um, the senior photography exhibition. Um, this is only a small portion of my work though, so let's go to my studio. I first picked up a camera when I was 15 years old. I was on vacation with my parents. I'm an only child, so naturally I was very bored on the trip. Um, and all I had was my little point and shoot camera, so I would just go around and take pictures of everything and anything that caught my interest. Um, that was the first time I began to look at the world through the lens with the intention of making something beautiful. As far as my family history goes in the art world, um, my dad works with cameras for a living. Um, my grandpa paints and he also worked with cameras and videotaping. One half of my family is very musically inclined and is a really great performer. His creativity kind of just runs in my blood. <laughs> a day in the life of a photographer is noticing things that most people find to be ordinary. Um, it's noticing different light patterns, shadows, the way people are overcome with emotion, um, just things like that that maybe a lot of people would pass by are things that I'm very interested in. Um, just capturing those moments and those are a lot of things that go through my mind as I create my images. I started out as a commercial photographer. Um, I was working with all kinds of people. Um, I was working with models, dancers, actors, um, mostly people from the entertainment industry. And I fell in love with it, but I realized having gone to a fine art school for four years that um, I fallen in love again with photography, but in an entirely different way. My work has pretty much made a 360 since I've been, since I've been studying at a fine art school um, because I've learned really to photograph in a way that I never would have before. I've gotten a lot of criticism for my commercial art, for my advertising, photography, um, but I, I'm very thankful at the same time for having that background because I am able to have a strong understanding of what it takes to be in that field and how to work with other people, um, you know, photo editing skills, as well as just business in general. A lot of my work has been mostly portraiture, a lot of um, a lot of fashion type uh, commercialized work, but I'm finding now with my work um, as I as I'm learning more about being a fine artist, I'm shooting I'm shooting more in a way that expresses emotion and it shows that through my color palette and the way I stage the scenes that I'm shooting. Um, I would consider my work kind of a, a twist between fine art and also commercial. My favorite part about being a photographer is having the creative freedom and the ability to produce images that not only make other people feel beautiful when I'm doing client work, but also work that other people can connect to on an emotional level. Um, work that they can access and they can relate to and when I when I hear that other people have that have that ability to do that with my work that's one of the most rewarding things so the beginning of my semester I had a lot I have I had an influx of gigs and just different client shoots um, it was I found it to be really difficult to balance that with my schoolwork and my social life um, a lot of the time, you know, if everyone was hanging out, I would bring my laptop with me and just do some editing work and Photoshop work, you know, while I'm while I'm kind of hanging out. Um, so that's definitely something I have to incorporate into my social life in order to get all my work done. Um, it's also difficult but possible to schedule shoots in between classes. Like I said, it's it is it is a challenge really balancing everything, but if you're passionate enough about it, you can make it work. I've been working with an agent for the past three years and he's given me a lot of clients which have given me a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Um, one of them being when clients cancel last minute. I travel to the studio 
and that takes a lot of time as well as transportation expenses. So when clients cancel, it's really a problem because I just spent money that I'm not going to then be compensated for. There's a lot of a lot of people who will not call in advance and they just won't show up and clients like that are probably the worst kinds but unfortunately that's part of the business and <clears throat> these are things that happen and you just kind of got to deal with it if you're willing to work in the business. I think a lot of people don't feel obligated to pay money for a photo shoot which is which is comical to me but I think a lot of people are they they don't understand how much work goes into it how much time goes into it and how much I've as a photographer I've already invested so much so much money into my equipment um, Adobe products so for them to not want to pay for my time my money and just general skills it's definitely an insult but it's also a lot of ignorance and that's something I find to be a common problem. There's a lot of physical strain when I'm shooting at an event and I'm on my feet for five to six sometimes seven hours and I'm holding a very heavy camera with a heavy lens with a flash that also isn't very light so there's a lot of a lot of physical strength that you really need to exert when you're on the job sometimes. I think there are a lot of misconceptions about photography, one of them being that it's as easy as clicking a button. I guess I, I guess the first thing I'd want to talk about and bring to light is working a camera in manual mode is a very um, challenging thing. It's a lot of trial and error, it's a lot about um, basic math but also understanding what that entails in terms of exposure and ISO levels. Um, so there's a lot of mechanics that um, you really need to understand before you pick up a camera and know what you're doing with it. There's also a lot, a huge amount of post-production work that goes into photography. It's, it's not enough today to just take a picture and be done with it. There's a lot of editing, color correcting, dust removal if you're working with film, which also entails a lot of darkroom work and developing pictures, um, which could take, you know, hours for just one image, which can also be the case with a digital image if you're working um, on Photoshop for, you could be working for hours and it still might not come out how you had intended it to, uh, to come out. Um, there's also another skill that goes into um, photography and knowing how to how to balance the color and how how to get it at the highest quality and resolution. So there are a lot of different things that um, really go into photography that a lot of people don't take into consideration. I think there's also a lot that goes into photography that people don't think about. Um, there's as far as concept goes. When you're looking at an image in the realm of fine art, there's a lot people need to consider when you're looking at something that I think a lot of people kind of scan over. Um, there's a lot that you can understand about humanity from looking at a picture and as corny and cliche as it might be, there really are a thousand words that you can talk about when you're looking at an image and I think that's something that's really important to consider when you're viewing art in general. I started doing graphic design in um, college, but I really built my skills when I started working and doing graphic design for movie productions. And that was kind of where two things stemmed. I My interest for photography grew from my interest in graphic design, just working with Photoshop and different Adobe programs. And then, after I started working on movie productions, that is really where my interest for set design and movie production and production design really grew. So I think these things kind of revolved around each other and kind of helped me to become the multimedia artist that I am. I feel very adamant in having an online presence, um, especially on social media because that's how word really travels, um, especially in the art field. It's really important to me that I have a Facebook page. 
an Instagram, and most importantly, a website that displays my entire portfolio of my best work. Um, I also have business cards um, that make it very convenient for me to just give someone my info. Um, I feel like a lot of people don't have a lot of online presence, um, and I think I think it's a problem when you really want to put yourself out there um, if you're interested in making money, um, or if you're interested in just generally making connections. Um, I think that's the most important thing in getting your work out there. I have worked five internships throughout my career. Um, my first internship, I worked on a movie with, uh, it was called We'll Never Have Paris. And on that internship, I I did a lot of different things. Um, one of them being graphic design, another one of them being, um, I worked with the production designer and the art director, kind of like putting the scene together, staging everything. And that was very similar work to what I did in other internships um, when I was also working on other productions. I also worked as a graphic design intern for a Project Runway designer and also another graphic design internship doing a design for a production company. So these are all internships that have given me a leg up in my career. Um, they've really helped me to build connections and get real world experience. Um, on the other hand, there was a lot of problems just having, you know, the transportation being a factor in getting there and not having a lot of compensation for that, um, not getting paid for any of them. Um, those were big issues, you know, as a college student, it's really hard to support yourself um, just being a student and with basic living essentials, let alone commuting into the city and, you know, working for eight to 12 hours a day and, you know, not even making a penny for it from it. Um, so those were a lot of struggles that I've dealt with. Um, even having worked as many internships as I have, it's still hard finding a job in the art field. As far as my gigs go, um, it's really helpful having an agent that already has a relatively big clientele base. Um, so that that keeps clients coming relatively consistently, but if not for the agent, um, I rely on social media, I rely on my connections, um, and also just general word of mouth. As a photographer, it's easy to make a lot of money when you have consistent clientele. Um, however, some shoots make more money than others depending on the client, depending on the budget, depending on what kind of a shoot it is, whether you're shooting an event, how many hours you're shooting, um, how many outfit changes there are if you're doing headshots or a fashion shoot. So there's a lot of variables that um, you have to take into account when you're when you're charging clients. I think there is also a lot of doubt when it comes to making money as a photographer. Um, it's definitely not easy. Um, it's not easy to have consistent clients. It's not easy to you know, charge a huge and exorbitant amount of money um, because there's a lot of people who don't want to pay a huge amount um, for, you know, a couple hours. But I think as, a, as an artist and as a photographer who is passionate and very serious about pursuing this career, you have to put your foot down and you have to really put yourself out there if you want to make money, but it's definitely possible. Doing photo shoots, I've made anywhere between a hundred and a thousand dollars, just depending on the kind of shoot and um, other variables. My best advice for an aspiring photographer would be to take pictures every day, um, be consistent with making work, um, always, you know, jump, always be ready to to create something new. If you have an idea and you're excited about it, the best thing to do is to jump on it because you don't want that idea to sit around and forget about it. So I would say it's really important to be consistent. Um, it's also really important to have all your work in one place. Always build your skill set, read a lot, um, understand job requirements, what they're looking for. Um, Having a BFA also helps. And it's also important to not get discouraged. Um, if I had let myself get discouraged by people telling me that there's too much competition or there's not enough money in that field, then I wouldn't have made all the work that I'm proud of today.